Good morning! Today we are continuing the Fixing Bad Percussion Writing series. In the last episode we covered the tenor drums, today we're covering the marching bass drums, the tonal bass drums. Writing for marching bass drums can be a little bit tricky, there's some things to look out for and we're going to be fixing some bad writing in this video. But before we get into it, make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. We're doing the Carmen Heights bass drum character reveal at 200,000 subscribers. Okay, here is the first marching bass drum piece we're going to be looking at. And by the way, thank you to everyone who sent me emails asking me to fix your bass drum parts. Although most of you, the parts were completely fine. You guys just like to complain, I suppose. But this one does have a few things that I want to go over here. Okay, I was looking at the first few bars. Everything looks okay. It looks like there are three bass drummers in this line, which is probably a smaller school. It's fine. It's what it is. I wouldn't write like a stack like this for unisons unless maybe it's like an add-on or there's some people playing splits within the unison parts for these i would just write them yeah like that that's the uh, marking i would put to notate a unison and i definitely appreciate that this person notated the check of the buzz roll a lot of times you'll see let me show you what <laughs> what you don't want to write okay i don't know why this looks so weird this is supposed to be a dotted half note <laughs> uh I, I guess muse score notation just does it like this but yeah, if you see that then you don't know like how fast or slow to pulse the buzz roll so let's control z all of that yeah this is what i like to see i like to see exactly what pulse is going on in the buzz roll so thank you for that but i am noticing that there is no sticking written and for bass drum splits i usually won't write the sticking unless i wanted to like start off the left like going into a unison hit yeah i would definitely add in the sticking for unison hits though because you want to make sure everyone's playing with the correct hand or else it'll look bad so i just said that i usually won't write sticking for splits but for right here we're gonna have to because this is gonna be a left hand release so we want to make sure that base one knows to do it like that all right then base two should know to play right left right yeah there's no reason for only base one and two to release that with that forte dynamic so we'll make that a unison which means base three needs to start this triplet off the left hand so that we all end on the right hand and i'll just put the sticking in for base two here just so it looks nicer right left right okay this person did write unison slash notation for some of these <laughs> unisons i don't know why it's uh they're pretty inconsistent with writing the stacks versus the single line i would just always stay with the single line because it's faster and easier and makes it simpler to read Okay, there we go. So I left these unison notes as stacks because when you're adding in drums, personally, I like to see it done this way. Honestly, this is all like personal preference. Um, you can do it any way you want, but I think the most common way to write just isolated unisons is to do these slash notations on the middle line. I also don't know what this note is supposed to be. I I'm guessing that should just be base one. So let's, uh, yeah, right there. And we want the sticking for all this. So let's put it in. Something that is a little bit peculiar about this is there are no accents at all, except for these three. This quarter note triplet right here is apparently the loudest thing in all of this. Okay, so I think this looks a lot better than what was previously written. You can see the side-by-side -side comparison right here. So let me go try and play it. Okay, here is the next piece we are going to look at. This is in Finale. <laughs> Great. Yeah, you can see uh, Finale, it doesn't organize the stem directions very well. All of the stems are pointing up and down all over the place. You can see in Muse Score, the last one, it just points them all up. And that's the way I like to look at it. But this is like a jumble of stem direction madness. So we're going to fix that by selecting all this. Going to Utilities. Stem Direction. Up. And that looks a little better. Okay, starting with a written tap-off. Ah, oh, missed opportunity for an extreme tap-off. And we got no sticking whatsoever. We're definitely going to need to put that in, so let's do it. Okay. 
Okay, then the next thing we got, this is pretty choppy looking. Um, I'm hoping that you have very experienced bass drummers playing these, uh, these single sixteenth notes. It's much harder than people think it is to place where the E of the beat is, like the second note is one E. That's pretty difficult, okay? Don't underestimate the power of the E. And also the uh is pretty hard too. Okay, so then we got a uh, slash notation here. Now, normally when you write those slashes, that means diddles, like a double stroke roll. So when I see that double slash, I'm gonna think it's right, right, left, left. And then on B4, when I see the single slash, I'm just gonna assume that it's just two right notes. Now that's like the standard like shortcut for writing for marching percussion is to make it a double stroke roll. But I know from experience and doing bass drum a lot that they probably don't want that to be diddles. They want it to be singles. So the four notes will be right left, right left. And the two notes will be right left like that. And honestly, as long as you have an instructor there who wrote the part to tell the performers how to play this, then it's, it's fine. But I'm going to change it to make it what is normally written for these fours. So that would be... It would look like that, so just four 30 second notes. It looks a little more dense than uh, just putting the uh, eighth notes with the slashes, but that's what's more common in my experience, and that's what I'm gonna go with. Honestly, it's just kind of personal preference, but as long as the performers know what to do, that's, that's the most important thing. So we're just gonna change that for all of this. Okay, again, I hope you have very, very experienced bass drummers doing this, because this is, this is beefy. There's a lot of meat on these beats. Okay, bar five, we got, let's see, unison. It's like a little hurt to action. Uh, should this be a shot, this top hat accent? Usually in the drumline world, the top hat accent like that, that is the standard definition for a shot, like a rim shot. But to make sure that we do it right, we're gonna make the note head an X. So we gotta go here, gotta go here, gotta click here, gotta make it the X right here, and bam! And then same with this note, bam! Okay, now these are slash notations again. Um, these should probably be twos, except for this one, because bass two is just going from a diddle into a shot. Probably wouldn't be right, left, right. That would be hard to get that shot, so left, left, right. Uh, oh, also I see an issue here. So bass one probably won't want to play that unison. Sometimes if you have very experienced bass drummers, they'll just know that, but we're gonna act like people don't know. So we'll make this a stack of just bass five, four, three, and two. Bass two should probably not play this because he's coming out of that thing. We'll just take bass two out of these two unisons. It'll be okay. Okay, I promise. Okay, all right, and then what is this? Okay, so we got like unison accents and bass four playing the inner beats. Y yes, it works, but like why would, why would it be bass four playing that? Also isn't, yeah, there's a run and then bass four would have to play da -da -da -da, which is weird. Usually you would want bass five to end that run. I was gonna change all this to bass five, all these inner beats, because I think that'll sound cooler. And then why don't we make these bass four, three, two, and one. And let's also make these muffled, these inner beats. That'll be super hip and cool sounding. Okay, to me, this is gonna be a lot like cooler sounding than just bass four for some reason doing the inner beats. Um, again, personal preference. I think my personal preference is the right preference, though. Okay, and then last bar, once again, I wouldn't put slashes. I would just put the actual rhythm so that they know to do it hand to hand. Whole note? What the? No, we don't do that here. We are doing quarter notes and only quarter notes. Actually, I don't think bass one should play that. It'll just be bass five, four, three, and two. Okay, so to me, this looks a lot more clear and easy to read and figure out what is wanted. And also, this bar is cooler. So, okay, let's go play it. Okay, I got one more uh, bass drum part that I want to look at. Now this, uh, this is interesting here. So this is a cadence for an introductory slash middle school drum line. All right, and uh, they are playing everything off the left hand. So you can create a spoon with your right hand and pageant wave to the audience. What does that even mean? Are you the 
Here's the screw, the light bulb. Screw the light bulb. Screw that. Just, screw it. Look, just relax the hand. Relax the hand. Here, go wash the window. Oh. Wash I, the window. I love that. Oh, wash that window. Okay. Long, long, short, short, short pearls. Long, Ooh, long, short, fancy. short, short. Long, long, short, short, short pearls. Okay, so with all that in mind, uh, here is the part. K, okay, all left-handed. Yeah. All right, twos going up. Yep, seems fine. Oh, what's this? Yeah, that's probably going to be too many notes in a row right there for bass drum number three. Yeah, it's four bass drums. Now, let's see. I would restructure this run. I'd probably just go top to bottom. That way, bass three doesn't have four notes in a row. It's only two. I wouldn't write this rhythm like that. I would do dotted eighth notes. Yeah, that looks cleaner. So once again, we have these uh, 16th notes going up, people playing on the E's and the U's. Now, this person said this was for like a very beginner middle school band, so I would absolutely not write this <laughs> for them. In fact, these twos are going to be pretty challenging. I would be surprised if they're able to play them cleanly. Just doing the double stroke like in time with their non-dominant hand, that's that's going to be really difficult. But I think they, if you work on it enough, they could probably get it. But I wouldn't do this. All right, let's just make this I wouldn't do triplet buggedas either. Dick it or dick it or that. That is very hard. Triplet or triplet even. That's, yeah, that stuff is too difficult for beginner middle school people. So let's just make it. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Just doing that. Definitely not triplet diddle. Holy crap. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> that's too hard. That's too hard. We'll just go back down. One, 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 two, two, two. Okay, I wouldn't do this. Uh, it looks like we're going back with the right hand for just that bar. I think this was written in like an old version of Muse score because it doesn't have the unison note. Uh, so I guess we'll just do the stack for this because I can't figure it out. All unisons. Mm -hmm. And maybe crescendo that up into that. And then we'll add some sticking in here. Okay, this bothers the crap out of me that these are all stacked, but I don't- I don't know why there's no unison notation. I, can I add? How do I add something? This is confusing and weird and I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna not. Okay, definitely not this. We're just gonna make these twos. I think these are all supposed to be left hand. I'm not sure, it doesn't really say, but we'll just do twos down, da, 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 and then four, four, three, three. Nope, oh, that's much better. I would make this 16th note thing all unison, so we'll just copy and paste this. Cool. Oh, too many bass four notes. Uh, I think this is just copy paste from the beginning. Yeah, we'll just copy and paste our change so that bass three is not playing a thousand notes. Okay, once again, I believe these are supposed to be fours, and I don't like putting the slashes. We're just gonna do 30 second notes so they know it is alternating. And now this is gonna be weird for uh, bass four coming to... I mean, I can do it, but I wouldn't expect some very beginner middle school person to do that. So we're gonna take out bass four in the unison and probably the upbeat also to make it cleaner. There's like a bunch of crescendos to an unknown dynamic. We'll just... I'm just gonna put one in. Okay, cool, that looks a little better. And just so I can read this easier on my laptop, we're gonna change it to landscape mode. Hopefully I can do my uh, long, long, short, short, short wave. I think I can nail that while playing this, I hope. Let's see. Okay, so that's all the time we got for bass drum splits today. Hopefully you found this video educational and informative. If you did, make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt, such as this one. I will leave that link in the description. And have a good morning.